Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube, and uh, I guess it's the first time f for uh, everything, isn't it, really? My beautiful wife, Michelle, some of you know her, and those of you don't, now do. So um, I'm going to do Michelle's hair today. It's going to be uh, a little bit different because I've got to jet off to a meeting, so one of our amazing colorists, uh, Isabel, is going to colour her hair for me, and then when I get back, I'm going to do a haircut. So what did you ask me to do with your, uh, your fringe? Your bangs. I don't know. I think I want to be able to move it around a little bit more. I just find it a little bit disconnected at the moment, which has been great. But I think I just want to change it up a little bit. But I'll leave it in your hands. Mm, like always, it's in my <laughs> hands. <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously Michelle's a hairdresser as well. And uh, even uh, hairdressers' wives have particular requests that sometimes uh, we need to troubleshoot and fix. So I'm sure I can do that. Um, Michelle, can you just, as, yeah, just take it out for me for a sec? So everyone can see. Michelle likes to wear her hair short. I, for a while, they convinced her to wear it longer just mm -hmm. because it was just sort of something different, I guess. Mm -hmm. But we're going to cut it all off today, aren't we? Yep. So she wants to be able to wear a, um, I think it's just like bangs, and then you want to be able to sweep to the side. So yep. hopefully, I can satisfy your request today. Okay. <laughs> so um, I guess I'll see you guys a little bit later. Color's going to be on time lapse. So for those of you who want to watch the process of having the color done, you can slow it down and watch it. Um, but then today we're going to go into some depth and detail with the haircut. So I'm going to sort of tutorial style take you through it. All right? You know what I do at the end, do you? <laughs> do we always start? Are you ready to do it? <laughs> <laughs> And the colour is done. How you feeling, wifey? Very relaxed. You alright? So I'm half asleep now. It's good you don't often get to sit down. One of the things Michelle springs at me all the time, because we're so strapped for time, can you cut my hair today? And one of the things I say is, um, I don't like to be rushed. I think it's pretty reasonable for me to want to take my time when I cut anyone's hair um, will take the right amount of time, will have the right amount of time, let alone when it's my wife. So let's recap what we spoke about before in the intro. We need to be able to wear the fringe to the side and in the middle, so we'll go through how I'm going to do that. But first, we're going to start with the length and I'm actually going to cut the length wet. Um, then I'm going to dry it off. Um, and then we'll talk about how we're going to shape the hair and cut the right shape into the fringe so that we can wear it uh, split in the middle and a little bit on each side and all just to one side, um, whether it be that side or this side. So let me um, spin Michelle around and we'll start with the back. Those of you who have been watching my videos, you would know my opinion on sectioning. Of course, it's very important, but sectioning for me is dependent on the thickness of the hair and your ability to be able to cut through it accurately. And provided you can do that, um, then I think the sectioning is the right uh, size. I'm gonna keep it quite blunt and square. And again, not gonna Cut it between my fingers. I'm going to do it between the scissor and make sure I don't stretch the hair and manipulate it too much. When we're cutting on the right, you can see I just move to the left a little bit. And then when I cut to the left, cut on the left, I make sure I move to the right. You can see that little bit of graduation under there I like to deal with after. So when I'm sectioning my hair, or sorry, grabbing my, the hair that I'm about to cut on this side, you can see I swing around, 
to make sure I over direct it because we want to make sure we keep those points. Then once the length's been cut, because I am holding it away from zero with my comb, I need to make sure we cut that graduation out from underneath there. You guys can see that pretty good, yeah? Now we keep working the hair down into this area. And now that I've cut my guideline, I'll actually cut it on the skin.
I like to make sure that I put some texture on the ends. You probably notice that I only point cut on the last section because I don't like to create foundation shapes using point cutting. Doesn't mean that it's not something you can do. It's just something I choose not to do. Make sure it's balanced and the length's done. All right, so wifey likes it left pointy towards the front. So you'll see that when I cut this, I brought it all to the back and then I go and adjust the sides when I'm done. Just make sure that you don't stretch it too hard down over the ear. And then what happens is the reason why I like to do this is because you end up with a little guide on the, on the sides. So you can see that I've got my guide here and all I need to do is just nick these little bits off. Just head up just a bit and this way, yep. Bossing you around like always. <laughs> You're the bossy one. Mm. No, she's not. I'll do the other side. Again, just making sure when you're combing this over the ear, make sure you get it from behind the ear like that. Comb it out, but don't, don't stretch it down over the ear. I always work in a center parting, even though we're not gonna part it in the middle, just so it's easy to get a balanced result. And you can see the reason why I like to do it this way. You can see that on the top here, there's a guideline. So then I just have to follow that and take those hairs out that are underneath, which is effectively um, the, like the graduation because I'm directing it to the back. Um, you're always gonna get those little hairs hang out underneath. Yep, I'm gonna check the other side again and make sure it's the same. I don't think I combed it out under here. The colour looks good. Nice and blonde the way I like it. <laughs> Another thing is that you can always wait till the hair's dry to do these parts if you want. I'm pretty sure they're the same. Let's hope it is. Otherwise, I'll get a roasting. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to um, wrap dry the whole lot. Um, and then when you see us next, we'll talk about texture for shape and movement. Plus, we're going to um, cut in those bangs in the front. And sad is tomorrow I'll still be sitting on the floor Writing about you Writing about you Lines about midnight car And the color of your eyes Thinking about you Thinking about you Take a shot at my feelings again No, I can't get it out of my head Take a shot at my feelings again No, I can't get it out of my head Okay, so I just quickly wrap dried the hair and I like to do this to make sure that we don't manipulate it. So if I need to adjust any of the foundation shape that I did, we don't want to put uh, manipulation in the hair because unless Michelle then um, blow dries her hair the exact same way when, like after we make adjustments, um, I found, find that sometimes it could actually affect the way that it's uh, going to sit. So we just want to make sure that the hair's dried natural fall without manipulation. I'll quickly um, spin around. We'll just see if there's any adjustments to be made. It's looking pretty good. Let's 
put some texture in those ends. And then we're going to do the bangs. We call them fringes here in Oz. But the guys hear me use that term bang all the time because of me spending time in the US. And I think it's starting to become more common terminology here in Australia as well. Let's check the sides. You can see we've got that nice uh, length increasing towards the front there. But as I say, it's actually, um, it's a square or a squared uh, look rather than that classic uh, concave that we see a lot. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I just like to make it a little bit sort of quirky and spunky by making it a little bit shorter, squarer. Um, again, there's no right or wrong. I'd just like to show you guys different ways of achieving a similar shape. And again, when checking this, be careful not to stretch it down too much over the ear. Otherwise, you end up um, having a little lump here because if we go like that, you can see what's going to happen. It's going to spring up there and you end up with a lump. We don't want to do that. You effectively create a, a hole. And beautiful. You're, you're beautiful before I started. That's because it was my haircut that grew out. Let's talk bangs and fringes. I'm going to show you the section that I use. And I'd like to keep it the parting neutral. So we're going to work with a symmetrical parting still. Triangle section. So Michelle tends to wear it to the left, her left more. So you can see that I actually take more hair on the left, just chin down bow. You can see that. So you can see that um, although I've worked in a symmetrical parting that's here, there's more hair on the left than the right. And that's because we're going to wear it this way more. If you're going to like flip it and wear it both ways, um, then you make sure that's symmetrical. So you've got to even balance the hair on both sides. But because I know Michelle's only going to wear it split in the middle, like this, or to this side, I'm just going to leave a little bit more. It's not a lot, but it's a little bit. It does make a bit of a difference. It's probably a little bit too much. One of the things I don't like to do is take hair out of the temple area, like out of here. So I'll section that back out. And although I just mentioned that sectioning is important, when you're doing shapes like this, it's even more important because it's not about whether you can cut through it accurately as much, of course it is, but it's more about making sure that we've got the right amount of hair on each side. You guys will have seen me do these fringes this way where I actually project the hair and we cut it there. But with this, we're actually going to do it the other way because we want to make sure that we can really open up this section and leave it dramatically shorter on top. This is going to help us when we push the hair. Make sure we get the length right. I know you don't like hair on your face, baby. Just put your head up a bit, thanks. And then make sure we get that length correct. Michelle doesn't mind it a little bit shorter. Spin it this way so you can see where I'm projecting it into the middle. Yeah. And then when we want to wear it this way, you can already see what's starting to happen. This will sweep across. When we pull it back, we can wear it in the middle, like this. And then if she wants to wear it up off the face and to the side, she can do that too. And we like to focus on the cheekbone. So I always like to keep a gap between here and here. So if you're gonna, for me, if I'm gonna cut in a fringe, I want it to make sure it's got good separation. Otherwise it's more like a short layering sort of shape into the face. And I think that's what really defines whether it's bangs, fringe or short layers is Fringes are always eyes, cheeks, lips. Layers are more lips and chin. So we want to make sure that it's on the shorter side. So I'm happy with that length. And I'm going to bring it back. Make sure we don't pick up the hair that we left out. 
and I'm going to give it a little bit of texture, not too much. I'll spin around so you can see. And we're just going to give it some texture, but we don't want to chop into it and make our design line have holes in it. So we're just really about removing some of the weight out of here to create some separation. And then I want you to see what it does down there. You can see that not only is it short to long on the top, short to long, but it's actually short to long here to here. So that this is gonna push away and out of the face really easily. All right, let's move on to putting some texture in the back. Okay, let's shape the back. So I spoke about texturing for movement and to change the shape a little bit. And one of the things Michelle likes me to do, even though I think um, her hair's quite fine, is she actually likes quite a fair bit of texture taken out of the end. So we're gonna work in diagonal back sections projecting it horizontally. And we're gonna take some weight out of the ends, but nothing off the top. We're just gonna work underneath. We're gonna do on, on the top a little bit differently. So working diagonal back from the ear to the center, and then back to the ear. making sure we don't retexturize the hair, we just texturize. I like to project the hair at 90 degrees or above when I'm doing this technique, because as when we are cutting blunt, um, the closer we project the hair to zero, the heavier or the more solid the cutting is. And when we project it away, it gives the texture a layered effect. So that's why I like projecting it quite high. And you can see I'm actually being quite sort of aggressive with how diagonal I'm going in because we want to really create some separation. Do the other side. Again, diagonally back. Lucky Michelle's my wife because I've got to lean on her. <laughs> this wouldn't be the first time I've leaned on you for a lot of things like helping me get through every day of my life. We're lucky when we've got brilliant partners. They make us better. We do lean on each other a lot. That's what life is about when you meet the right person. But we're not here to give relationship advice, are we, Michelle? We're here to do hair. Actually, on um, the 23rd of this month, not only is it Michelle's birthday, but it is the... How old were you that year? You turned 24 or 25 that year? 23. 23. So that means it's 23 years, no, 20. 20 years since I got in the car and drove to Sydney and said to myself, you know what? I actually want to get serious with this girl, so I'm going to drive to Sydney for her birthday. And we ended up going out and having a dinner or something, didn't we? In Sydney somewhere. Way too long ago. It was way too long ago. Time flies when you're having fun. Right, so enough about us. Let's spin around so we can see what that's done. It gives it some nice texture here through the ends when it moves. So as I said, I left the top layer out, or the top section of hair out. So we just sort of work in diagonal. So I'll give you that as a sort of example. So the texture goes under here, we work horizontally. Now, on the top, we're actually going to work more traditionally like we would be layering the hair. And we're going to take texture out this way. And this is vertically, not horizontally. Give you a view from back here. So 
again, this is to create some movement and texture and almost give a layered effect without actually doing any sort of classic layering technique as such. And over directing this all to the back, we don't want to take any more weight out of, sorry Michelle, that's your ear, uh, any more weight out of the front section because as we come round to the front, because there's no hair, there's not as much hair here because we don't have the nape there, obviously. I don't want to take too much weight out of there because it can make it quite holy as well. And then I like to just pull the hair all the way back and I like to grab it like this. And this is how I do the top. I like to do it quite casual. If you wanted to section it, you could. And again, we project this back and this is almost like the veil that sits over the top. And that ties it all in together. And although it might seem like it's quite simple, when we style this and we dry it, it's gonna be quite beautiful. Although I could shave Michelle's head, she'd look beautiful. So let's have a look what that looks like when she wants to wear it slightly parted. So we've got some shorter pieces there, some there. When she wants to pull it right to the side, and wear it right over, we can, we wear it like this. When we want to wear it more towards the middle, we can again. And if we want to go right in the middle, which even as beautiful as my wife is, I, I don't rate middle parts on many people at all. I just, I think it's really, really harsh, especially when we do like bangs. So that's closer to the middle and you can see that we've also got some on this side and some on that side and that gives us that balance that Michelle was looking for. All right, let's do some styling, even though you're probably going to hate it. <laughs> Michelle doesn't like the way I style her hair. No, I didn't. I didn't want to have said that. Uh, you've said it a few times. Often I cut her hair and I'm finished, and then I see a shuffle off off the back of the salon somewhere and, and restyle it after. Come on, it's true. I, I zhuzh it a little bit. Hey, can't be good at everything. Michelle's been a hairdresser longer than me, so she knows how to do hair. Right, I'm going to give it a blast, get all the hair out, and then we're going to do some styling. And then Michelle's going to tell us what she did with the colour. I hope she likes it or I'm sleeping in the garage. Voila. Looks great. So you can see with just a little bit of uh, movement we put in there just with the iron. It's just making sure that it's not straight and, you know, just all flat. Uh, we use some of the um, Matrix um, rocket texture. Now, I believe that that product has been discontinued, but it's one of my favourite sea salt spray texture products. Let me show you the back. So you can see what I did. We just like to wear it quite beachy and fun. Colour's great. You can see that the whole idea of bending it was, I left a bit of a hole in there, sorry Michelle. The whole idea of um, the iron and the texture is just so it doesn't look, sorry I know you are a beautiful mum, but mumsy and makes it a little bit more playful and fun, so. How did I go boss? You go good. You no? always go good. Did I go good? Yeah. So um, Michelle being a colourist, can you tell us what you guys use with the colour yeah. and what um, you did to, sorry, lighten your hair? Isabel did a full head of foils with the uh, Matrix Light Master and Bonder inside. Um, and then we processed that, rinsed it. We used the new acidic toners in the colour sink, mm -hmm. which make your hair and look and feel really shiny. Feels amazing, feels pretty soft. That's why we had to use the texture using spray the as well. Lot, so that's yeah, good. That's it's good. great. It's good to sit down and just, you know, there's no one in here today. It's just Michelle and I, so it's yeah. good. I'm a bit tired now. I get too relaxed having my hair done. Yeah. I could go to sleep. Well, you had a facial this morning, oh, which is true. why you're a bit red and yeah. shiny. And then you shiny had a nice skin. massage at the basin. So <laughs> it's a nice relaxing day. I like treating my wife to a little treat. So um, thanks. thanks for hanging out with me today. It's about time we go and pick up Ada yeah. from school. Huh? Now it's going to pick up Chuch 3. <laughs> um, and finally, after well, I've been doing YouTube almost 11 years. Yeah. Finally, you sit in the chair and let me do your hair for all these beautiful people that have been supporting us all these years. Thank you. Thank yep. you. 
All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you liked it. Um, look, I know I say it all the time, but I'd be very bad at my job if I made my wife look bad because you're just beautiful. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So if you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you do. Don't forget to turn on the notification button. And uh, if you think someone might uh, benefit from seeing this video, whether it be someone who needs their hair done or someone who's learning how to do hair, please do share it with them. Um, by sharing, we help others grow. And that's what being an influencer is about. It's about influencing the education of other people in our industry. So until next time from Canberra, Australia, it's bye. <laughs> Should probably just leave it, but I can help it.